So on our screen, we have our network diagram. We have R1 connecting to R2 across the 10.1.12.0 on a slash 24 network. We have R1 using dot one and R2 using dot two. The physical ports that they're going to connect to are ports one dot one, um, one slash one slash one on R1. And R1, we have to name the interfaces. So R1 will be called R1 to R2. Whereas R2 will be called R2 to R1. And the system interfaces are going to be using 192.168.1.1 on a slash 32 on R1 and 192.168.2.2 on a slash 32 on R2. Now on some of the documentation you'll see that a system interface is called a loopback interface. This isn't quite true because a loopback interface is not the same as a system interface. The system interface is what you will use as the routing protocol's router ID. Now if you put a loopback interface in its place, the loopback interface will take precedence. But if you then add a system interface, the system interface will override the loopback interface configuration. Also you'll find that loopback interface, you could use any subnet mask you want if you wanted to put a slash 8 a slash 16 or a slash 24 you can do that whereas with a system interface you can only use a slash 32 so it can only be a host address so these are some subtle differences between a system interface and a loopback interface so now that we have a network topology let's get on with our configuration so I have two routers already up R1 and R2 and we'll use the defaults which is admin and admin also here we have admin and admin now the first thing I would like to do is just have a look at which actual device we're configuring so if I say a show chassis we could see we're using one of the big boys a 7750 SR12 so if I go onto the Alcatel website um, Alcatel Lucent And I look at the products and solutions. Just click it here again, no need to scroll down anything. I'm looking for a 7750, here we go. So we've got the 7750 service router. Um, and we're looking for the SR12. Here's the SR12, so let's just click that and make that a bit bigger. What you'll see here is that there are 12 slots. So you'll have slot, slot one, slot two, three, four, five. These are A and B. Then you have six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. You'll find that these two slots here, they're used for the switch fabrics, which are the CPMs, the, the control processor modules. Now you only need one of these to be operational. However, you'll usually find that there are two installed. One is active and the other one is standby. You, you can also use both of them and if both are operational or both are active, then they will load share the traffic. And then you'll have 10 slots for the actual IOMs, which are your input output modules. Now within each IOM, they also have two MDAs, which are your media, dependent adapters and this will be MDA1 this will be MDA2 and these are what provide your physical interfaces your Ethernet interfaces your POS interface ATM SDH these are your physical interfaces to other devices so if we go back to our uh, routers here if we say a show port from the beginning you'll see that there are no ports configured so we've got CPM A and CPM B. Um, it's got one card in slot one, but they have no ports. So we need to configure these ports and provision them to make them come up. If we say a show card, we can see that slot one has something equipped into it. Slot B has nothing. So we have one SFM, which is your switch fabric module, and we have one card. Now we could actually provision these cards before there's any equipment. So if I was to say configure card and to do a range 
you do one and let's just say two of them and I will say card type mm, oh here it is IOM3 dash XP dash B press enter now if we do a show card again we'll see that I've provisioned IOM1 which is up and I've also provisioned IOM2 which isn't actually in the system but these IOMs are hot swappable so you could provision do all of the configuration for an IOM and that, then at a later date you can just plug the whole card into the slot and it will already be provisioned even though we don't have anything in slot 2 at the moment so to continue I will now say show MDA and we also see that we have MDA 1 in slot 1 so the MDA is inserted into the IOM and we're going to provision the MDA as well so configure card 1 MDA 1 and the MDA type if I just type M5 and I press tab it should auto complete admin save now if I do a show port now we can see that the ports are up I only need to configure one slash one slash one but let's configure the first two to show you how the range command works again I could say configure port one slash one slash then we say one to two no shutdown again let's say a show port and we can see that the first two port ports are now up So let's configure the same thing on router 2. If I say a show card, so we're going to configure card 1, card type IOM 3 dash XP dash. B. Let me look at the MDA, show MDA, which is your media dependent adapter and we say configure card 1 MDA 1 MDA type M5 and tab then we say configure port 1 slash 1 slash 1 no shut now if we say a show port we see that our port 1 is configured excellent and we'll also name the system so configure system name SROS2 configure so it's one brilliant if we do a configure router interface and we say system then we call the address of 192.168.1.1 and we try a slash 24 it shouldn't take it because it's a system interface ah okay I've, I've done that a bit wrong so let me back up out of that if I say interface system not interface sys so we've got the system interface and we see that the system interface can be assigned only a slash 32 or a slash 128 which must, which must be for the IP version 6 so we now say slash 32 uh, let's say back undo interface maybe no interface sys interface sys shutdown back no interface sys now we say interface system and we give it the address excellent and we say no shutdown
So we see that we've got our system interface configured. We're also going to configure the main interface. So we say interface R1 to R2. We tell it which port it's going to, be going to use as a physical interface, which is one slash one slash one, and we no shut it. If we type in info, we can see that both of our interfaces are configured here now. We do the same on R2. Configure router interface system address. 192.168.2.2 slash 32 back interface r two two r one address 10.1.12.2 on a slash 24 give it its physical port that it's going to use and we now shut the interface excellent let's save that configuration and let's try and ping our directly connected interface ping 10.1.12.2 and it's pinging superb now let's try and ping the actual system interface which we shouldn't be able to because we don't have a route to it so if we say ping 192.168.2.2 we have no route but we should be able to ping our local one which is 1.1 which we can so we can see that the network is set up what we need to now do we need to give a static route from r1 to r2 and we also will have to have a return route back so if i say on r1 static route to get to the 192.168.2.2 slash 32 network we're going to use a directly connected interface which is 10.1.12.2 sorry we need to put the next hop so our next hop is 10.1.12.2 we still shouldn't be able to ping it because R2's system interface doesn't have a route back. So if I say ping 192.168.2.2, it's still not pingable. But if we do the same thing on R2, so if I say static route to get to the 192.168.1.1 on the slash 32 network, we're going to use the next hop of 10.1.12.1. Now when we ping, we have reachability. So this is just a very quick video displaying how to configure a card, how to configure the MDA, how to set up an IP address on an interface and how to set up a static route for reachability.